One of the objectives of today's lesson is that we'll explore some addition strategies so you can quickly learn your basic facts and not need to rely on your fingers to find sums. The first addition strategy that we'll talk about is the double strategy. The double strategy is easy because both add-ends are the same. It's important to know your double fact, so it's fortunate that these are some of the easiest facts to memorize. The double strategy is used in learning some of the other addition strategies. So memorizing these basic facts is very important. The next strategy we'll explore is called side-by-side. Side-by-side -side simply means that both add-ins are located right next to each other on the number line. Notice in the number sentence 7 plus 8 that 7 and 8 are right next to each other in counting order on the number line. So the rule for side-by-side -side is to take the smaller number and double it. Once you double the smaller number, you simply add one more to your sum to get the answer. The reason this works is because 7 plus 8 is one larger than the two 7s, and so 7 plus 8 is one larger than the doubles fact. Let's try another side-by-side -side problem. Notice 9 and 8 are next to each other on the number line. Side-by-side -side tells us to take the smaller number. The number 8 is smaller. Now we use the double 8 fact to help us solve this problem. 8 plus 8 is 16, but 9 is one larger than 8, and so our sum for 9 plus 8 has to be one larger than the sum of 16, and one larger than 16 is 17, so 9 plus 8 equals 17. The next addition strategy is called invisible number. Once again, the double strategy helps us solve problems with the pattern using the invisible number strategy. The numbers 9 and 7 are not right next to each other on the number line. There is a number in between 9 and 7 that we call the invisible number, and that is the number 8. The number 8 is in the middle of 9 and 7 on the number line. When you see two add-ends that have one number in the middle, you simply use your double strategy again you double the invisible number and that will give you the sum for the number sentence you're working on. The last addition strategy is sort of funny because it has a silly name. The last strategy is called naughty nines. Now the word naughty means to be bad so we're going to try to make a picture in your brain for how to solve basic addition facts with nine. In Naughty Nines, the bad number 9 steals one from the other addend in the number sentence. If the 9 steals one from the 5, the 9 is going to get one bigger, while the 5 gets one smaller. So now we rewrite the number sentence. If the 9 gets one more, it becomes a 10. And the 5 gets one taken away, it becomes one smaller and becomes a 4. Now we use the pattern of adding a 10 to a single digit number. 10 plus 4 equals 14. So then, 9 plus 5 equals 14. As we see in another example, we are essentially changing a 9 number sentence into a 10 number sentence. I hope you enjoyed learning some cool addition tricks to help develop mental math abilities and end the use of fingers in finding sums. This is how I solve 23 plus 34 using the hundreds chart. The first thing I have to do is find my first number, which is 23. I know that there are three tens in 34, so I have to add my three tens first. 10, 20, 30. Now that I've added my tens, I have to add four ones. One, two, three, four. Now I know my answer is 57. So I write my answer at the top. 23 plus 34 equals 57. Hi, in an 
effort to make things a little bit more clear about what we're doing in math, I thought I would make a video to put on Seesaw for you to understand um, the Make 10 strategy. The Make 10 strategy is a way for kids to do math quicker in their head. And while it seems a bit um, tedious right now, it is a great strategy for kids to have as problems get harder. So in our homework, we saw problems that looked like this. 8 plus 4 equals. Now while this problem looks pretty simple right away, and most students are able to just know it, we want them to get the process of making 10 under control now. That way when problems get harder, it becomes more of a habit for them to do problems like this. So in the Make 10 strategy, basically, we have students recognize that 8 is part of 10. So using the 10 frame to illustrate this process. Okay, so there we have 8 plus the 4. eight plus four. And now we want to make 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to decompose this number four into a number bond. And essentially we're asking ourselves, okay, what do we need to make this eight into a 10? And I tell the kids, this is where the magic happens. So the magic happens when we move two over to complete the 10 frame. We took the two from the four and made it into a complete 10 frame. The first part of the bond then is two, where these two came over to make the complete 10 frame. Then I asked the kids, what do we have left over? Well, we have the two left over. In this situation, we see that two plus two would equal four. This is called a fact family or number bond. Now I look at the kids and I say, okay, we used our two to make this into a complete 10 frame because eight right here, plus the two equals 10. There, we made 10. That's the purpose of the strategy, to make 10. Because now, brought those two down, now we can bring over what's remaining, the two, to create a much easier problem, a much easier number sentence. This number sentence is much easier for kids to see and instantly recognize the answer. 10 plus two equals 12. And I always tell the kids, this problem up here is the exact same as this problem down here. All we did is we switched some numbers around, broke down these numbers, and put them in a different place. Now you're probably wondering, why are we doing this? Why is this such an exhausting process for a simple problem? Well, the answer to that is once we get into more double-digit problems, if kids are able to make 10, they can solve these problems faster in their head. We want kids to build their fluency in a way that helps them solve problems in their head later in life. This is manipulating numbers so that they have a better understanding rather than just sheer memorization. As, as always, if you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. I'm here to help. These kids are doing fa fantastic with this already in class, but I know as they go home, this becomes more of an issue because they can't remember what to do. So use this as a teaching tool at home for your kiddos.